fact, let's say whoever we feel that we want to put on this pedestal, you and Tennessee Williams and Eugene O'Neill and, and then go to other ages and other times and whether it's Chekhov and Shakespeare and, and, and all of the best, regardless of a nationality, what would they share in common, do you think? What gift? Well, what? I hesitate to say it. Oh, well, I don't mean to, don't be, don't be embarrassed by putting yourself in the, in the category of those people. Uh, well, Just I tell don't me. do that, but I mean, I understand your question. I personally think that what the big ones have in common is a fierce uh, moral sensibility, which is uh, unquenchable, and that they are all burning with some anger at the way the world is. Uh, the littler ones have made a peace with it, and the bigger ones can't make any peace. And are they l fewer today? You know, uh, who knows? While we're speaking, somebody may be up on a, some corner, uh, some apartment house now writing a masterpiece. With an idea of burning in him or her. Yeah, it could be. So I'm not prepared to say that it's over at all. I could repeat, boringly, I admit, that the situation in the theater repels that kind of talent. Because there's no incentive. See, we blew the audience. The audience for this kind of stuff has, has become minimal. Uh, we, the prices are too high. A lot of people right. who would love to go simply cannot go. The whole, I mean, school teachers, uh, intellectuals, or people who don't make a lot of money. It's a hundred dollars any way you cut it. It's really insane. You yeah. can't expect by the time you pay to get there and eat dinner and all. Uh, that that's that by itself uh, makes it impossible to speak in the terms I've been speaking. Can you argue without being too pompous and pretentious that we are at a loss as a nation because the theater is not alive with the great conflicts of our time and helping us understand who we are and the great dilemmas that we face, and if we w were grappling with those issues, both in the theater and in our public dialogue, we'd be better off as a society. If the British had not established the British National Theater back in the 50s, uh, they would have exactly the situation we've got, namely a purely commercialized theater which cannot take great, great risks, not because they're not nice fellows, but because the costs are simply beyond mm -hmm. what reason would suggest. 